What does it mean to you personally to return to Russia to be reunited with your one-year crew member and to receive the honors that have been associated with the completion of your record-breaking mission? Uh, it means a few things. Um, you know, first of all, uh, since I'm leaving NASA here pretty soon, this might be the last time for me to come back to Russia, a country which I love and the people. I have great friends here and have spent um, you know, many years here, almost uh, actually more than a, a decade and a half. So it's, uh, you know, it's sad in that respect. I definitely will try to get back as much as possible, but not nearly as much as I was coming here as a crew member training for all these uh, years. Um, and then it was great to see Misha, who I've spent so much time with in space, and see how he's doing, which is, is great, and my, uh, my other crew members on board. I saw Sergei Volkov the first night I was here, and then I uh, saw, also saw Gennady Padalka and Anton Skaplarov. So, you know, just seeing them and other, other friends has really made it a, a great trip so far. Overall, how, how significant was the one-year mission, and in, in, in retrospect, in, in bringing us closer overall to our journey to Mars? Going to Mars is a bunch of baby steps. And, uh, you know, it started off with the first uh, human in space, Yuri Gagarin. And uh, this mission with Misha and I and all the people that put it together, not only my fellow crew member mates on board, but all, all the people on the ground, is another one of those steps. And, um, and uh, sometime in the future, all these small steps will lead to people putting their, their feet on Mars in the name of science, exploration, and discovery, and I'm proud to be one small part of that. It's been a bit of a whirlwind in the three weeks that have passed since your landing. Have, have you had time to absorb the magnitude of your accomplishment and the impact it's had worldwide on the, on the public's perception of human spaceflight and of the International Space Station? I have had very little time to do anything, actually. I uh, got back to Houston and jumped in with both feet into my pool in my backyard. And I guess that's somewhat of a metaphor for jumping right back into life. Um, and it's been uh, very, very busy. A lot of debriefs and medical tests. Um, so on one hand, I you know, haven't had time to to really come to grips with the magnitude and the duration that, that we were gone and just the, uh, the incredible effort it takes to fly any flight to the space station, no less a flight of a, uh, a year. So um, I hope in the next several weeks or months, I will have a little bit of more time to kind of decompress and consider you know, what this flight has meant to me. And I am getting a sense for, for what it meant to other people. I was kind of you know, somewhat, um, I wouldn't say shocked, it was somewhat a little overwhelming, I guess, to see how many people were really following along and interested. And I had a sense for that when I was on board, but not nearly uh, the sense I got for the, uh, the public interest once, once I had gotten back. So it's great to see that. And I think, uh, you know, over time I'll be able to, as I think about it and um, you know, contemplate the meaning of this mission, I'll, I'll really appreciate the, uh, the public's involvement in this more too. Scott, you're going to be leaving NASA soon to pursue future opportunities in your life, and you've said all along that you'd never be far from spaceflight. Looking back at your incredible career, and most recently the one-year mission, how do you feel that your contribution has opened the doors for others, for the future generations to follow in pursuing human exploration of space? A couple things in, in that question. Um, I am... Uh, going to be leaving the civil service, but I still will be working with NASA as a uh, human research test subject, kind of like what my brother was doing the whole time I was in space. He wasn't a, a NASA civil servant all this time. He was, you know, just almost like a volunteer. Uh, there's still a lot of data to collect on me and, and him, and we'll both continue to do that. I'll also continue to do the debriefs um, about my mission once I've uh, uh, left the civil service, I'll just do that with a retired astronaut badge. And by my, my, me leaving, it allows me the freedom to do a lot of other things, 
One of those is to continue to be an advocate for human spaceflight, but do it in a way where I have more time on my hands, uh, more freedom, and therefore, in my opinion, the, the ability to even do a better job than I, I currently can do now. Um, the other uh, a part of your question is about, you know, how can I uh, motivate or um, be an example for the other astronauts or future astronauts that will come behind me um, to, you know, for them to achieve their goals. Um, in my life, I have never turned down a hard job. I may have not have liked it. I may have thought of other options for other people to do it. But in the end, I would never say yes or, or would never say no to something I should deep down think I should say yes to that because it is hard. And, you know, when we do things that are really hard, we can achieve great things. And I think, you know, as that has worked as a great model for me. There are many times when people ask me to do something, as an example, be the backup to a space station crew where there was no flight associated with it. I didn't want to do it. Uh, didn't seem to make sense, but I was asked to, so I put my head down and marched smartly and spent a couple of years training for a space flight that had no flight. Um, but, you know, because I did that, that was recognized as, uh, you know, a, a major sacrifice. And, you know, later on that led to something else, which led to something else. So it was kinda, it's kind of almost been the model of my career to, to never, never say no to things. And I think that's why now, 20 years later, I have had a significant amount of experience and opportunity. Um, you know, I'm not the, I don't consider myself the most uh, capable astronaut, but I've certainly had a lot of opportunities and a lot of great experiences. And I would encourage those that come behind me to just have an open mind to doing things, the hard things, even if they might not think they're the right things at first. And lastly, over the course of your career, you've worked with many other astronauts uh, in space on your missions, both um, on the shuttle and on the International Space Station. But Mikhail Kornienko, your one-year crew member, talk about that relationship a bit and how are you going to move forward in keeping in touch with Mikhail over the incredible bond that you had in your you're in space. My brother from another mother. My space brother. Um, I plan. I will be friends with him for the rest of my life. Uh, he's a great guy. A really um, kind of a down-to-earth, kind of earthy, you know, walk with your bare feet through the grass kind of guy. And I enjoyed immensely him being up there. He did a great job always had a positive a positive attitude it was great that we could uh, you know share this experience together the highs and the lows and you know have each other to lean on um and it was great that this was done in an in an international way i think it really you know drives home the importance of the space station program as a place of international cooperation in something that is incredibly, incredibly difficult and how this international partnership makes us stronger at doing the hard things.